Office Wife. The story of the girl who married her boss and of the girl who took over. Harry Palmer opens the next chapter of Office Wife. It's two weeks now since I went up to Stella's office that night. <laughs> it was easier than I expected. I told Stella I wanted some letters typed and I couldn't type myself. And in the goodness of her heart, she said she'd do them. You see, I had to get into Puller's headquarters to lay my hands on some of his letterheads. And while Stella was typing her head off, I managed to grab a dozen sheets or so. Well, I'm all set to go. Jeff Pilgrim's been back at Bendigo's all this time and I've been lying low. It's a risky scheme, I'll admit that. But I've typed the letter and every night I've sat up practicing Benny Puller's signature. Now I think I can forge a reasonable facsimile, so tonight I sign it and take it into Tressida, Bendigo and Company. Yes, the only trouble is tonight I've got Millie on my hands, right here in the flat. Oh, Millie, why don't you go home? I've work to do. That's what you've been saying every night for two weeks. Can't we even go to a show once in a while? Well, why don't you go tonight by yourself? Go by myself? Oh, what's come over you lately? Ever since Jeff Pilgrim came back to the firm, you've been as surly as an old bear. Well, who wouldn't be? I was turfed off the puller account to make room for him, wasn't I? You should have married Marcia, and maybe then you could have kicked Jeff Pilgrim out of his job. One more crack like that, Poppet, and I'll kick you out of this flat. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything. <sighs> Seems I can't even open my mouth without you snapping at me. What's the matter, Harry? Is it money again? Look, it's just that I want to work and I can't while you babble incessantly. Millie, please go home, will you? You're not expecting someone else, are you? No, I'm not. Well, you're up to something, I know that. What's that typewriter here for? I hired it to type letters with. What the dickens do you think? Oh, well, why can't you get them typed at the office? Or, or let me do them for you? Because they're highly confidential and because I'm passionately addicted to typing myself. I like typing. I derive an erotic pleasure from it. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm quite aware of that. The trouble with you, Millie, your mental development was arrested at about the age of ten. That didn't stop you from taking every penny of my savings, and I haven't noticed you paying any of it back. Oh, Millie, 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 don't I mean anything more to you than a piggy bank? No. Come here and give me a kiss. And then, for Pete's sake, scram. All right, then. But I just know you're doing something funny, and I'll find out what it is. Don't you worry about that. I'll find uh, out. Now, look, if you wait a few days, I'll tell you myself. Off you go now, and uh, I'll pick you up and drive you to work in the morning. How's that? Oh, I suppose it's better than nothing. Do you promise? Yes, I promise. Make sure you slam the door. Good night, Poppet. Oh, what did I ever do to deserve Millie? Now for this letter. Hmm. It reads rather well, even if I say so myself. Yes, uh, Tressa to Bendigo and Company. Attention, Mr. G. A. Pilgrim. Dear Sir, I have appointed a Mr. Joseph Barker as my shipping agent for Port Kensiter, and at intervals in the near future will be receiving bills for payment on his behalf. These may be debited directly to me, since they will already have been passed for payment by my clerk and you may authorize them without the usual checking. For reasons known best to himself, Mr. Barker likes his checks left open. <laughs> you might mention this to your accountant. Yours faithfully, signed... Uh, Benjamin. Puller. Trouble you? Morning. Uh, one of your letters managed to get itself mixed up with mine. It's a memo from Puller. 
I'm afraid I read a bit of it without noticing it didn't concern me. No, oh, thanks. Well, listen to this. Tressida Bendigo and Company, attention, Mr. G.A. Pilgrim, dear sir. I have appointed Mr. Joseph Barker as my shipping agent for Port Kensida, and at intervals in the near future, you'll be receiving bills for payment on his behalf. These may be debited directly to me, since they will already have been passed for payment by my clerk, and you may authorise them without the usual checking. For reasons known best to himself, Mr. Barker likes his checks left open. You might mention this to your accountant. Yours faithfully signed, Benjamin Puller. Well, wish sure all my deals were as simple as that. Um, well, what does it mean exactly? All I have to do is bung my signature on the invoices and pass them along for a check. <laughs> Some guys get all the luck. Uh, I, I say, are you busy at the moment? Not particularly. Why? Well, I've been wanting a yarn with you for some time. You're still pretty terse with me, aren't you? I don't think you did the right thing when I was away. Tipping still after you mean? Well, something like that. Well, for mine, Jeff, you're looking at it with strictly one eye. Now, look here. I thought you were through with Marcia and with the firm. You'd have to get another job sometime and... Stella was on my back, wanted to know where you'd gone. Puller wanted you at 2,000 a year or something equally fabulous. So in my shoes, uh, what would you have done? I'd have kept my promise to shut up. Maybe, but uh, I thought I was doing you a good turn. And yourself as well? Oh, now listen, don't be pig-headed. Someone had to get your job, and who's closer in line than me? I don't know. I suppose you're right. Anyway, don't let's beat our chests. I'm not much good at holding a grudge. Neither am I. But I should be holding one for some of the cracks you made about Marcia. Oh? When you were supposed to be drowned, all I did was rally round. I heard no complaints from her uncle or her Aunt Harriet either. What the devil are you complaining about? Oh, forget it. I can forget. What about you? All right, it's over and done with. Is that a deal? I guess so. Oh, well, thank the Lord for that. Subject's closed. Oh, um, by the way, I'm going down to the filing room. Have you finished with that letter from Benny Puller? Yes, yes, I think so. Shall I file it for you? Good on you, thanks. <laughs> Any time, old boy. Uh, buy you a drink tonight. Not a hitch. Not a flaw. <laughs> Work like magic. And now to sew him up tight, we'll just burn this letter. There we are. Uh. Hmm. Might even be wise to throw the ashes out. What do you want, Billy? There's a trunk call coming through for you at 11.30. Well, you could have phoned, couldn't you? Well, Tess is on the board at the few minutes, and I was passing, so I poked my head in, that's all. All right, you can poke it out again. What's the matter with Nothing, you? Nothing, I'm busy. Oh, you act as though I was spying on you or something. Ooh, what can I smell? Have you been burning something? I've been rubbing two sticks together, so will you clear off? Uh, don't hang about, Millie. Clear off down to your switch before I heave you out. Oh, all right. Oh, but you have so been burning something, I can smell it. <laughs> Set the building on fire next, that's what you'll do. Yes, but not literally. Miss Fraser, I mean Barbara. Yes, Mr. Pilgrim. Here a minute, please. Now, look, Barbara... One day you're going to make a mistake that will cost the firm thousands. Now, look at this shipping bill. What does it say? Eight thousand two hundred pounds. Now look at your copy of it. The one we get paid on, because that's what we quote. What does yours say? Oh! Oh, Mr. Pilgrim! Come on, what does it say? Two thousand eight hundred. Yes. You see, Barbara, I can't do any work here and keep tabs on you at the same time. Oh, Mr. Pilgrim, I'm so awfully sorry. Yes, I... but you can be sorry till your head comes off and you won't recover that 5,400 pounds, will you? I'm not growling at you because I know you do your best. But I really think you were happier down in the accounts room with your machine. I was. Oh, it worries the life out of me. Truly, it does. And the more I worry, the more mistakes I seem to make. Mm, well, unless we try you out under ether, Barbara, I don't see there's much else we can do. If I have a talk with Mr. Fleming, uh, well, you won't feel too bad about it, will you? No. Oh, sometimes I wonder why you don't throw me out the window. 
I haven't defenestrated anyone for such a long time, Barbara. I'll probably get you stuck on the sill. Come along, cheer up. Now, how's the time? Ten to five. You can pack up if you like. I'm going. Good night, Mr. Pilgrim, and... and... and thank you for being so kind. <laughs> That you, darling? Mmm, what can I smell? Come and look. I have a marvellous dinner for you. Good Lord. What on earth is that enormous bundle of stuff? Oh, well, some of Barbara Fraser's work over the last ten days. I don't want to pour over it all night, but I don't let it pass. Is she that bad? <laughs> Poor kid. She's a sweet little thing, but she's getting worse every day. Nearly had a stack for 5,000 this morning. Oh. I'm seeing flaming. We'll have to advertise again. Well, don't worry about it now. You going to mix us a drink? You bet your life. I wonder what speeches of bidding I'll have for the secretary after Barbara. You've been going downhill ever since your time, darling. Was I the best? By miles. <laughs> First you, then Stella, then Barbara. If they get any worse than Barbara, they'll be signing the names of the cross. <laughs> Jeff, I've just had a gorgeous idea. Look at me. I've too much time on my hands altogether, and, oh, darling, sometimes I get so bored. Well, what's the idea? Well, why shouldn't I come back, Jeff? Hmm? Oh, darling, please, if I get some nice references, would you have me for your secretary again? That's a very sound scheme, Mrs. Pilgrim. Marcia, we're going to think about that seriously. Jeff knew how long I'd been waiting for just this opportunity. You never know. The world's full of Stella Bronsons. Now that he seems to be forgetting her completely, I don't want another one to pop up and take her place. Anyway, I'm his wife. Who can look after him at the office better than me? No one ever has. Only that Bronson woman. <laughs> We invite you to listen to further episodes of Office Wife, written by L.J. Hardy, a Donovan Joyce production.